What's going on, you guys? This be your boy, Scott, by Nature TV, and we're here for a brand new episode of Yes for the Mess, where we talk about celebrity gossip, hot topics, and all things reality TV based. What's going on, you guys? Now, um, as you guys already know, I do live reviews on SWV and Escapes the Queens of R&B. As of right now, it doesn't look like I'll be going live um, tomorrow night. However, the review will still be prop will probably still be out tomorrow night, but it may be out a little bit later in the night. If not later in the night, it'll be out early on Monday. So it doesn't really look like I'm going live um, tomorrow night after the episode like I normally would because I am out of town. So it may not go the way that I wanted it to, but just know that the review will still probably come out tomorrow night, but it may be a little bit later in the night or early Monday morning for you to see it. So be on the lookout for that, okay? Also tune in on Tuesday night, for a roasted review with myself and T and Josiah. Make sure you guys are tuning in, you know, because we've been giving it to you. And I've been looking and y'all still watching that very first episode. It was just at 12K and it's now at 15K. Like I said, that was the highest rated roasted review we've ever had. So shout out to everybody that's been tuning in and supporting us. With that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and get into the tea. Now, what we're about to get into right now is a sneak peek of tomorrow's episode. And the next video that I do will probably be on a sneak peek of tomorrow's episode as well. Now, we're going to start this thing off with Latasha Scott and Taj, okay? Now, in the sneak peek of this episode, um, Latasha Scott met up with Taj. As you know, Taj lives in Nashville, and Latasha Scott was in Nashville meeting up with Motown Gospel um, to talk about her solo album. So she's going to meet up with Taj and they're going to have a discussion about what's going on with Latasha and her sister and everything that's going on in her solo career. So we're going to start it off right there and um, I'll be back, y'all. Let's get into it. Hey! Miss Taj. Hey! Hey, babe. How are you? <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Welcome to yes. the Yes, I was about to say, I'm in your city. What's up? Have you been here before? I have not. All right, we got to go check Come it out. Come on now. Tosh has this energy about her. We're both from two different girl groups, but we found a common place, and it's music. The first time that I even heard SWV, it was electric. I am going to try to. What's the name? Oh, my body's just for you. I was like, I love it. If y'all did it. Y'all hear them unnecessary ass runs, right? Continue. We can do it too. Oh, look at this, straight out of Compton. Straight out of Compton. I fell in love with that uh, straight out of Compton cassette tape. Yeah, yeah. They curse so much. I was like, <laughs> that shit. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, you know, we we grew up gospel, so oh, I yeah. couldn't listen to it. But when I would be with my cousins, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, LL Cool. Yes. Ladies love Cool J. I still do. Yes. <laughs> Oh, Whitney Houston. Whitney. Uh, Destiny's Child. Girl. I remember when they were babies, they used to look us up. Every time we had to go to Houston, they would find our hotel. Are you serious? And be in the lobby waiting for us. It was adorable. They were our, like, super fans. They loved us. We used to take them on autograph sign-ins, everything. Really? In stores. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. I never knew that. What do we have here? Wow. It's such a privilege to be on this wall. It is. This it's is humbling so just to be a part of this. Absolutely. Thank you for bringing me, Taj. Yes. I really enjoy it. Yo, I wanted you to see yourself. Yeah. Look at how beautiful. Yeah. The fact that my grandchildren can say my grandmother contributed to this in a special way. My heart is elated. Can you imagine? We're a part of African American music yes. history. Oh, baby. We in this thing. I want you to tell me a little about, about everything that's been happening since we last okay. met. I mean, the last yes. summit was intense, to say the least. Yeah. So how can we work this out? Because it was very clear that something was wrong between you and your sister. Mm-hmm. Oh, he said oh, You can sit over next to your sister. Because you look cute. Thank you. Felt like she body shamed me. It was a, like a lot of different body things. Body shamed you. Yeah, it's it's a long story about me having a little butt in the group. Oh, hold, hold up. Yeah, I yeah, know yeah. y'all ain't fighting over no booties. No, little it's booties. not that. That's not the only thing. Some things happened with her and my mom. Ain't nobody steal your money. When you and Rocky stole my money, Mama didn't say nothing. Mama got quiet, just like she's quiet now. 
I'm the oldest. And when you disrespect mom, I'm like, what's going on with you? But that seemed like it's something more going on between you and your sister. That's it. Tasha is very vague with her answers. Honestly, I don't know what the they are arguing over. I have no idea. But clearly, their conflict is way, way more advanced than I thought it could be. We need to get back to the beginning. Things change, people change, and situations change. I hope as we for speak. For the good, right? I'm hoping for the good as well. Yeah? Yeah. I had a meeting today. Oh, yeah? Yeah. For uh, a record deal. A solo deal? Yeah. Yep. I plan on stepping out and not fearing this time. What does that mean? Are you plan on leaving the group? I want to step out and, and find some freedom. I had to head on my... Okay, so that was the scene between Latasha Scott and Taj, okay? And she was sitting down talking with, you know, Taj about her record deal and about her issues with her sister. I just feel like at this particular point, and I'm not trying to take anything away from Latasha because we all have insecurities about ourselves and we all have things about ourselves that we may not like and that we need to fix. I know, for example, for me, when I was coming up in this YouTube game, my biggest insecurity was my teeth. To this day, I don't know how I chipped it. I've had my theories of how I chipped it or when I chipped it, and I don't know how that shit ever happened. So I was walking around my first 10 years on YouTube with some effed up teeth. And that was the first thing that people would come for me about. When I said something that people did not like, the first thing that they would come for is my teeth. Really didn't care about them coming from my list because, I mean, that's something that I just can't help. But they was talking about my teeth and it made me feel very insecure about myself. And it just fueled the anger that I had for people. So instead of sitting around here moping around and being mad at the world because I had some effed up teeth, I went and I fixed my insecurity. And now that my insecurity is fixed and I have brand new teeth in my mouth, no dentures though, no dentures, none of that. <laughs> no dentures, no veneers. These are all crowns that were done by my dentist and was paid for with my insurance. Okay. So once I went and got that done and got that fixed, I felt better about myself, but I never felt the need to put nobody down. And I feel like with Latasha and her um, issues with her weight from the past and the things that people have said, there may be a sore spot for her. And maybe Latasha needs to go seek some type of therapy to get over that because I'm very sensitive to others' feelings a lot of the time, but at some point in time, people are not going to give a damn about your sensitivity, Latasha. And I feel like you do take a lot of your issues and then you kind of plant those issues on other people and guilt trip them. So I don't, I really don't feel like Tamika was body shaming you. I really got to be real about that. I don't feel like she body shamed you at all. But I really do um, think that it was a figure of speech, but I can see how someone like you, for instance, who had, you know, image issues or body issues or something like that would feel like it is. But that's just a situation that could have been fixed with one conversation. It could have been fixed. I felt like it didn't warrant all of that prolonged anger that you had in regards to Lata in, in, in regards to Tamika. That's just how I feel. I don't feel like that's that was even warranted or even necessary. That's just what I think. Um, in regards to your solo album, you tell Taj that, yes, we're doing, yes, I'm gonna do a solo album. I'm trying to be free. I'm trying to do my own thing. I just wanna be free and, and do this. Like I said on many videos, there's absolutely nothing wrong with Latasha going out, doing her own thing, going out, doing a solo record, because obviously Escape is not going to do no gospel album. So if this is Latasha's release of singing, singing about things that she's experiencing or, you know, singing about whatever, then that's fine. But you have to do it in a certain way. And I think the problem with Latasha is that she's doing it in the sneaky, foul way. She's not letting the girls know what she's doing. And when you're in a group and you're making moves like that, especially moves that involves being solo and all of that other good stuff, you should allow your group members to be a part of that conversation and a part of that discussion. That's just what I think. I don't think that it's fair to go out and do something like that and not inform your group. When you go out there and do something like that and not tell your group about it, it makes it come across like you're plotting. It makes it come across like you're doing things to distance yourself from the group. It puts you in a bad, it makes you look bad and it puts you in a bad position. And you're talking about sometimes people change, things change. It's like you want, it's like 
everything that Candy has said about you is validated because as soon as you get an opportunity and a group is on fire and then now y'all got this show and now you decide, okay, I'm going to go out and get a solo album, but I'm just not going to tell my group members that I'm going out to get the solo album. Do you not understand how that looks and how bad that looks on your end? Because you can't do that, especially when you call yourself you know, I made Escape. I gave them the name. I did this. I did that. And all of that stuff. But you're defying your baby. You're defying the things that um, that you accomplish with that group. And then on top of that, you don't want to have nothing to do with the group. And you want to distance yourself from the group. But at the same time, when it come down to the Soul Train Awards and y'all receiving a Lady of Soul Award, then that's when you want to get your ass on the stage and be unified with your group. It just looked real bad on your end, Latasha. And that's why you're getting all this grief. Now, I've seen a couple of people come in my comments and say, oh, y'all need to give her some grace. If she's such a bad person, why don't you pray for her? I never said that she was a bad person. I'm saying that her attitude is fucked up and that the way that she looks at things is fucked up and that she got a stank personality. And that's why I don't nobody like her right now. And me calling her out and stating the facts is not me attacking her or going in on her. I hate it when people try to come in and be on their high horses when they see a person showing the fuck out and see a person that's showing that they don't want to be a team player and then when you call it out and you call it for what it is now it's oh y'all attacking her ain't nobody attacking this young lady no one's attacking her we're simply calling her out on her shit and that's the problem she's been used to so many people not calling her out and used to people being her amens and her yes man that whenever you say something that doesn't go along with what she thinks or what she says then you're attacking her absolutely not so let's move on to the very next part of the sneak peek with Coco and her best friends. And I can honestly say to you guys that those really are her best friends. I've been following Coco on Instagram forever. And these two people are always on her Instagram, you know, always around her. So those are really, really, really her best friends. So let's get into Coco's conversation with her friends. Let's let's check that out. I don't want to flex one time. I don't even stress, baby. You about to make a mess, baby. Uh, why you looking so perplexed, baby? I had to hit on with the flex one Hello. time. Hey. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. What's good? Hey, sister. How you doing? What's up? You look good. I love you. Baby. Uh, <laughs> what's going on? You done got skinny yet? Yes. You too, little baby. <laughs> I'm so excited and happy to be home because I get to see my best friends. Can I start y'all off with something to drink? I want the penthouse. Can I get a Coke with a lot of ice? I want a Shirley Temple. How old are you? <laughs> LaTroy is like my little baby brother. Anything I need ever, he's there for me. Can I ask you something? What is this? Bro, I bet them little titties hang when she takes that breath. <laughs> To Maya, I consider her a little sister. She's not caught up on who I am or what I do. I just prefer real people. You want that Hollywood shit? I'm not here for it. So what the hell you been doing? I mean, we've been missing each other. She's been gone. I've been gone. You've been gone. We've been so busy on the road doing shows. Our 30th year anniversary is coming up, so we prepared. A lot of people been posting about that, too. Mm, that's that's nice. nice. Y'all trending. Yeah, OK. I see you. Yeah. I see you. The shows are cool. You know, I do what I do when I leave. How are you? You good? My mental is good. That's I've been good. good. Yeah. That's good. In 2017, I was diagnosed with bipolar depression. The devil is busy. Oh, wait. That's his job. That's her job. I have manic episodes. I could be happy one day and I feel like a wave and then I'm really sad and deep in depression. My final straw for me seeking help was I was thinking about killing somebody. And I knew that it was an issue. It was deeper than I even understood. So I went to get help and I'm glad that I did because I could be in jail right now. I've grown so much. Yes. For so long, those seeds were planted about you. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody sees you like, oh, this is the real Coco. Once I was diagnosed, I was put on medication and the medication calmed me down a lot. I've come a long way, but it's a struggle every day. You're in that third quarter of life. You gotta enjoy this shit. And y'all are not young. Hot damn. 
Yeah, what did you say? <laughs> y'all not young. Oh, I'm young. Girl, please. One thing everybody needs I'm to young. focus. Okay. And this pussy's still getting wet like I'm 20. Yeah. Yeah. Shut the oh, f- up. You better believe it. Oh, my God. Talking, I'm not young. You this is crazy things I don't want to think I'm about, you. I'm 52, but no. this pussy is 21. <laughs> Okay, so that was Coco and her conversation with her friends about bipolar depression. Now, I'm sorry if you experienced any echoes because I totally forgot to put my my earphones on mute while it was playing. This part was playing. So forgive me if you hear if you heard any echoes. That's my fault. But um, it was refreshing to hear Coco talk about her um, bipolar disorder. Um, um, most people didn't even know that she was even diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Um, but that's something that we really don't be talking about in our community. And what I mean by our community is Black, African-American community. We don't really talk about things like that. And then when you hear about people with bipolar depression or something like that, the first thing we like to say is that, oh yeah, she crazy or he crazy or they crazy and stuff like that. So that is the first thing that we normally hear about when we hear about bipolar depression. Like we don't look at everything that goes along with it. Um, From what we know, Coco was, um, was looked at as someone with a bad attitude, you know, someone that wasn't likable, you know, somebody like that. And you know, for a long time, we just thought that she was a bitch and that she had a fucked up attitude. But now that we know what's really going on, it that attitude that she had or those, you know, lashes that she would put place upon people were pretty much, you know, probably based on her and her bipolar disorder. You know, people have their ups and their downs when they're bipolar. Like you never know what to expect or what you're going to get from them when it comes down to that. So. Um, it was a great, it was great hearing her talk to her friends about that and how she's on medication and things of that nature, you know, because sometimes you need it. And sometimes, you know, sometimes people don't like taking medication, especially for depression, because they don't like the way the pills make them feel sometimes. Sometimes the, the medication, the antidepressants don't really do people justice sometimes. But like I said, um, I'm glad that she talked about it and you're seeing a lot more of SWV, it looks like. Um, but um, it's nice to see, you know, the con- the compare and contrast, you know, SWV have more lighter scenes while Escape is carrying on with all the drama. So you get a clear contrast to where everybody's at in their lives. So that's pretty much it for this particular sneak peek. I'm going to do another video on um, the sneak peek that everybody's been discussing online. So I know I got to do a sneak peek on that. Got to do a video on that particular sneak peek. It's going to come out right after this one. So be on the lookout for it. But with that being said, everybody, this be your boy, Scotty by Nature TV. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video, as well as click on the notification bell so you can be notified whenever a video drops. If you want to follow me on any form of social media, my Twitter, Instagram, and my TikTok will be down below in the description box. With that being said, you guys, this is a premiere. So if you are in the chat, Please leave nothing but blue hearts in the chat for Danita. That being said, I am out of here until the next video. I will talk to you guys a little later. Bye. What's up, guys? It's your boy Tramel. I just wanted to say that I have a new project that's out. It's called mixed feelings it's on all streaming platforms i would hope that you would go and check it out it's a really good feel of an album it's got everything you need and more it's got r b it's got a little bit of pop it's got a little bit of hip-hop it's everything that you need and more it's out all streaming platforms like i said please check me out and you can also follow me at i am underscore tramel that's i am underscore t-r-a-m-e-l check me out hope to hear from you